when I compliment someone and they can't just say thank you. <laughs> I set an alarm. I thought it was for 6.15 a.m. and it oh, was for 6.00. Why are you turning off? Sisters for like 26 years. Yes, ma'am. 26, 27 years. That's crazy. That's how that works. And we've always been like best friends the whole time. Well, we didn't really, no, we didn't have a choice. But like when you're with somebody from the beginning, like I don't remember a life without you. No, because some people do not be close to their siblings. No. And it also depends, like it was just us. Nobody, we didn't have three, four, or five, six siblings yeah it was only us but we were never like beefed out or anything like we were always on good terms like it was maybe a couple times when we like wouldn't talk to each other for like a couple days but yeah we I were always recall. like yeah, best it would friends. be like a few days yeah yeah but when we were little you were mean you told me that <laughs> <laughs> no i specifically I, remember it's when you were I was a teenager say, is there a time frame because there's a time frame it was when when you were a teenager and I was like a preteen, so I was in middle school still. You were like high middle school or high school. Oh mm-hmm. my! Um, you were just it was regular like teenager, you know, were you frustrations. Annoying? Of course I was annoying. I was your little sister that you had to drag places, but no, like I you just didn't want to be around me. I think and I, I just that. I annoyed you, but just my existence annoyed you like. I vividly remember <laughs> when I got my period for the first time and you were sitting on the couch and I was in the bathroom and I came out like Dory like I obviously I knew what a period was because mm-hmm. I was 14 like I got my period super late TMI That's um, not late. 14 is late sister Michelle didn't start until 16 and that's hella late that's very late the, I, had, I was no, 13 the age right now the average age is 8 to 12 yeah. Eight years old. Eight to twelve. And you know what? They say it's getting younger and younger. And people are saying it's like the hormones and the food or whatever. I was about whatever. to say there's no way eight-year-olds are starting their period. Yeah. There was a I whole thing on Twitter about it the other day. Because somebody was like, yeah, my eight-year-old just started her period. People were like, eight? That's so early. I got mine when I Somebody said 16 when I was 16. Yeah. And then they were like, you were hella late. 16 is late, but yeah. eight is like crazy. Yeah, no. I was 14. Mm-hmm. I was in the bathroom, and I was like, I was pretty sure I knew what it was, but <laughs> I came to you anyways, and you just were, like, so mean to me and, like, dismissive. You wouldn't tell me, like, you wouldn't help me get a pad. You wouldn't confirm that it wasn't, like, me bleeding to death. Like, it was horrible. I can't speak to that because maybe it's a memory that I blocked out. I, re- I genuinely don't recall that. Or it just wasn't, like, a memory that mattered to you, but it, like, was vivid Correct. to me because I was getting my period. Correct. Have you ever heard that saying where it's like a random Tuesday for you is like the worst person, like the worst the day, of worst somebody's day life. for somebody else? Sometimes we remember things. It's the same thing, but of course we're going to remember differently, it differently. Yeah. yeah. I apologize. That's for that. like, like I was just saying the other day, like how we experience people differently, you know? Mm-hmm. Like how you can have one opinion on someone because maybe you met them on a good day where they were in a good mood and they felt like being happy but maybe i met them when they were having a bad day and i'm like that's literally the most annoying person i've ever met or like she's so rude or you know that's why when you meet people like if you have a friend say you have a friend or you're with a colleague or coworker or whatever and they tell you about somebody such and such and it's negative 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 you can if it's multiple people saying that, that's one thing. Yeah. But if it's this one person that says this, at the end of the day, yeah, it might be in the back of my head, but you can't, you got to take that with a grain of salt. At yeah. the end of the day, I meet everybody like I meet you for the first time, no matter what I've heard right. about you, whatever I might, I might know about you. Because like you said, they're not the same person, two different people. Right. Or maybe you just didn't mesh with that person. That's yeah, not, like just the two personalities yeah. didn't mesh. And also sometimes people be having like agendas. Like, you ever see someone who's, like, really well-liked, and then it'd be one person who doesn't like them for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and it's like, you don't like them because mm-hmm. they're that girl. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, some people just be jealous. To that point, sometimes when people, and I think it depends on how the person also, 
but sometimes when people are like that if there's one specific person that doesn't like that person that's one thing but I can relate to there's a certain unattractiveness about when people constantly tell somebody over and over you're this you're that you're great you're this and that person gets a big head about it mm, and, or that ego. person ego you know yeah. what I mean I'm the type of person, I'm Patty Betty. Somebody will tell you you're gorgeous, you're pretty, you're this, you're that, you're blah, you're blah, you're so fine. I'm not saying it. I'm hollering. I might think it or I might not think it. Why? Because like they already know? If, if it's the kind of person that is cocky about it and it feeds their ego and it's something like that. Right. I don't, I, I, something about that turns me off. Right. If you're a beautiful person or you're cute or you're fine well, or something like that. Well, because at that point, they stop even being cute. That, it, you know, like when they, when the, you the could demeanor be the is ugly. You and could be the prettiest person. And if you have an ugly attitude or an ugly demeanor, like you're literally ugly to me. Like, that's what it is. And, and I won't no feed back. into being yet another person that tells you, you're gorgeous, you're great, you're yeah. this, you're fine, you're, no. That's no. interesting. But I was just telling Chris the other day because we were, I think we were watching a TV show and somebody gave the girl a compliment and she was like, oh, thanks. I like your, da 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 And like she just threw out another compliment back. Mm-hmm. That is my pet peeve. Like when I give somebody a compliment mm-hmm. and they feel like they have to like look at me and examine me and be like, okay, what can I compliment her on? And usually it's a lie mm-hmm. because they say it so fast. Like, oh, I like your lashes. You're supposed to give me a compliment back. Like, quick. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm not that person. <laughs> you like. <laughs> I'm not that person either. It's not for that reason, but I think it's because I can't take compliments. You know you me. You can't take I can't compliment. take compliments. So for me to give a compliment, I'm not going to compliment you unless I mean it. Right. If I say, oh, girl, that dress is fire, or your makeup is on fleek, or whatever. If I give a compliment, it's because Same. I'm comfortable, or I like that scarf. And I think that's how we were raised. Like, our yeah. mom kind of was, like, I'm, always told us, she gassed us up a little, but then she would always, like, gas other women up or tell us how yeah. to gas people up. You yeah. know, like, we didn't, she wasn't, like, a hater. I'm always saying, <laughs> if you look good, if you smell good, if I like your shoes, your hat, your shirt, yeah. I'm going to let you know. Yeah. And it makes people feel good at the end of the day. I 100%. love, because I love when people say, lately, like, with my hair, it's been my hair. I love getting compliments on my hair. That's the one compliment I can take because it feels like an accomplishment because right. it's been a journey. But, you, like I said, you know me. I'm not good at taking compliments. Yeah. So I don't give compliments just for no reason. Right. I don't know. You know, the older I get, the more I don't like physical compliments. Like physical compliments. as weird as it sounds, like or maybe it's not. This sounds bad, and maybe this ego <laughs> you were talking about. But I know I'm pretty. Mm. Like mm. compliment you, me on something else. Yes, like you're beautiful. Thank you. Like of course I'm gonna say thank you, but mm. it's like what else? Especially like if you're single and like someone's mm. trying to pick you up, you know, at a bar or whatever. Like obviously, like you're beautiful is just like the most basic thing you can say yeah. because. A beautiful woman in her 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, no, she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, what else do you see past that? We all have eyes to see somebody's beautiful. Mm -hmm. What else do you see? Am I funny? Like, am I wise? It's crazy that you said that because I literally just today at work was watching a video clip of a woman talking about they're saying things that, like, what compliments or, like, what small things do you like that a man will do for you or say to Mm. you? And people were saying different things. And one of the girls was like, I like when a man compliments my nails. Ooh. Or I like when a man compliments my makeup and people were like, where are you going with this? Like, maybe he's not, you know yeah. what I mean? But she's like, that. he pays attention to detail. He yeah. appreciated the fact that you got ready. He took the time, he appreciates the time and effort that you took. Yeah. What man is going to notice your nails right. and say something? So if they do. And it shows that you care. Like, you mm-hmm. wake up every day and, like, give a shit mm-hmm. about life. Like. It's easy to, you know, go to the airport with your bonnet on your head and, like, instantly. <laughs> We're not even going to talk about that. We didn't even go talk about that. But it's easy, you know, in some PJs or something. Mm-hmm. But, like, I love when I see a girl come to the airport and she got, as crazy as she might be, some heels on. Because mm-hmm. I ain't wearing no heels in the airport. But some heels, mm-hmm. like a nice flowy linen outfit and her matching luggage and nails and hair. Like, it's nice to see people, like. Care. Yeah, care I what they look to, like. I used to be a person that was like, you know, we used to go to Pistons games all the time. Mm. Daddy used to take us all the time to Pistons games. 
And I used to see girls walking around bags, heels, stilettos. These are five, six inch heels. You're walking around this big old arena, <laughs> up and down the stairs. Yeah, and the I fur. Like, sis, you're doing the most. But then it's like I heard at some point, like every time you step out, that could be the only time somebody is. You know how many people you pass on a daily basis that you just see. If that's the impression that people get of yeah. you, why not make it a good one? Like, I want every everybody, time you leave yeah. the house, like, why wouldn't you want to feel good? Like, good. a baddie. Like, I mm-hmm. want people to see me and think I'm a baddie. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, if I'm going to Kroger, <laughs> that's why I go with my little little bow people <laughs> with the sunglasses and the mask. Yeah, because we you don't love need to a mask. Me. 2023, no. we love a mask. But in the you grocery always store. see people in the grocery store. And like, I hear people like, Lorinda, like, Lorinda, is that you? I'd be like, no. <laughs> or I have my headphones in and pretend I don't hear people like, no. That is not me. Yo. Because I'll look at how much at the, you know, at the grocery store. But mm-hmm. if I'm going out to a club mm-hmm. or like, you know, mm-hmm. an event, like, I'm going to put my baddest That's headphones fun. on the That's club. That's the best. That's the best. Yeah. So one thing that was like, kind of hard for me growing up was like always being in my sister's shadow Mm -hmm. and it really didn't happen we kind of were individuals for most of our childhood until we got to high school school, because that was the first time we were in the same place at the same time Mm -hmm. you know I think I might have been in sixth when you were in eighth right yeah I was in sixth when you were eighth but middle school was so separate high school (laughs) it was all just one big pool and I had classes with people like your friends you Mm -hmm. know people your age and it was always like, hey, little Dory. Like, people, no one even took the time to learn what my name was. Oh, they didn't ask. Like, they didn't no, didn't people know. didn't, they didn't ask, they didn't care. They yeah. just knew I was your little sister. Mm-hmm. It was just like little Dory. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's why college played such a big role in me being like an individual, Finding, you know? Yeah. Because in high school, I was little Dory. Even when you graduated, I was still little Dory to some people, you mm-hmm. know? But high school, I mean, college, we went to rival schools, mm-hmm. so you're at Western, I'm at Central, and it was like a blank slate for me to like actually like make my identity, yeah. and that I I really flourished there like into my own person. You, did. you were so happy and you were so creative, yeah. and you were like you've always not always been outgoing. That's a whole other thing. We'll get to that. <laughs> you have not always been outgoing, but you were probably the most outgoing that you've for been sure. in college for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because I, like, wondered sometimes if things about my personality even were me Mm. or if it was just you, Mm -hmm. like... Mirrored behavior. Yeah, like, you know, I love cheer to death, but, like, I kind of came up in cheer behind you, you Mm -hmm. know? You had started... We both started young, but you had started at least a few weeks or months before Mm -hmm. I did. And I I was... I did it for longer than you, too. Yeah. And I loved it to (laughs) death, but looking back, I'm like... Was that me or was that just what my sister did? Mm-hmm. And like for a long time, because we were so close in age, I feel like our parents would kind of group us up together. Our own family <clears throat> did that. How many times have we been called Dorinda? Dorinda. We're two different. We people. are two different we human get beings. Dorinda. Even to this day, Dorinda, and they don't care which one it is. is it's it? just to get one of our attention. Like mm-hmm. we are two completely different people. Mm-hmm. Like and. <laughs> You remember when we got our cell phones? I'm still bitter about it. You were in eighth grade. I was in sixth grade. We got our cell phones at the same time. And you felt some type of way about that because obviously I'm younger, just getting into middle school and Mm -hmm. getting a phone. And you had gone through most of middle school, about to end it, and Mm -hmm. you were just now getting your phone. So it was like we would just get grouped together a lot. And sometimes it was great because, like I said, we were best friends, and it felt like we were twins sometimes Mm -hmm. growing up because we were so close. But then it's like, no, we are individuals. That's why I appreciated college so much because it did give me the opportunity to, like, become my own person and that's so important to like I feel like a lot of people get kind of like like strangled by their families a little bit smothered that's the word I was going to look for smothered by their families a little bit and like even certain cultures what your parents want you to be is what you become Mm -hmm. like certain cultures it's like they respect doctor they respect lawyer they respect scientist Mm -hmm. And if you're anything else, God forbid, something creative, mm-hmm. like, get out of here. They will disown you. Yeah. You know? And it's, like, it's so important to find your own niche in life 
and just be your own individual person, you know? I think that's kind of, and our parents, for the most, they did. Oh, 100%. But you, just when I, as a parent, I feel like I want my kid to do everything. Yeah. I understand as irritating as it was growing up, I understand the mindset of I want you to stay busy, one, to stay away from everything else. And yeah. nowadays, the world we're growing in, who knows by the time we have kids what we're going to have to keep them from. Right. But it's also like you want them to experience, play soccer, play the violin, play uh, sports, paint, uh, go be a cheerleader, get into and all we did of these everything. things. Get into all of these things because then you can figure out what your lane is. You can yeah. figure out what you wanted to do. And for me, like with cheer, it I didn't grow up. I feel like when I was younger, I wasn't a Barbie, this, that, and the no. third. But cheer, something about it, and, like, <clears throat> it became my thing, yeah. and then it really became my thing. So I see how you got dragged into it. But we also did some stuff that, like, our parents would put us in, and we hated it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we got put in so much stuff. Mm -hmm. God bless her heart. Mm -hmm. Love my mother. But it woo, was a lot. every weekend it, it was, was something lot. new. I, we didn't even know where we were going. Half the time. Yeah. She would just be like, Sign oh, stuff. I'm taking you to Toastmaster. What is Toastmasters? They teach you how to make a toast? <laughs> Bro, we were in etiquette classes. We did tennis, basketball, soccer, track. Like, we did every Everything. every little camp that they had to offer. And you know what? I think that was great. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, I am starting to see... A negative side to that mm. only because I have a hard time focusing on one thing agreed I feel like agreed. I have to try every last thing and like sure in life you can try a lot of different things mm -hmm. you know you only you have all this time to live but uh what is it what do they say they say uh jack of all trades is a master to none or mm -hmm. something like that if you know a little bit about everything you're, you're not, not a, a master, you don't master you don't any anything. one thing and I think that's one of my flaws, like one of my flaws in life. Mm -hmm. Like I'm great at a whole lot You're of good stuff. At everything you I'm do. good at so much, but I'm not the best at anything, mm -hmm. or I'm not even like excellent necessarily at anything. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm just good at a bunch of stuff. And <laughs> it's like, where does that all come together? And, you know, sometimes it works out. Like I'll have a job and things that I learned in college with, along with things I learned in high school mm -hmm. versus something I found out this day. You know, talents and skills come together and it works out in one environment, you know. Yeah. But then sometimes you're just like an array of a and bunch like, of different ideas and thoughts on. and, you know. I think it, it not worked the opposite for me, but being involved in so much then. And even in college I was involved, but not much. I was in a couple of clubs and would like go out like the social scene but maybe it's with age too I think because I did all of that it not burned me out mm. but I pulled back from yeah. getting involved in a lot of things yeah. now because I felt like I was always involved always in a involved lot of things and I also don't want to be the person going back to the jack of all trades thing like I don't want to do a whole bunch and only give it a little bit. I like if I want to do something and if I'm going to dedicate my time to something, I want that to be the my thing. thing. I yeah. want that to be the go thing. Go pull out balls to the walls with it. But then it's like I, you never know unless you try it again. Yeah. You know, you have to try a little bit of something to see what even you like. Right. But I'm just scared to even get into a lot of things because I want one thing. Yeah. And going back to the high school thing when you say like you felt like you were always in my shadow and stuff like that to me it's for me what I thought I was doing was when I was taking you to parties or inviting you you sat and ate lunch with my friends sometimes like my friends knew you and liked you they loved you yeah. they liked you, you know what I mean we all hung out together but I to me I was doing that because I wanted you to have those experiences yeah and back in high school too when you're 15 16 17 years old you know, you had seniors on your side. If you yeah, know what I mean. 100%. You had, you know what I mean? You had oh, people. it was great. It yeah. was great. I'm not going to pretend it was negative because it definitely was not. No, like, no, I no. was so grateful for the fact that you, like, and I was really shy, like, in high school. Like, True. it was hard for me to make friends. Like, I cheered and I had friends mm -hmm. on the cheer team, but, like, it was hard for me to make friends. So, having you there to, like, 
show me these people like mm-hmm. yeah i ate lunch with you guys because i didn't really mess with you know people mm-hmm. in my grade like yeah. and so it definitely had its perks like you took me out to parties like that was an experience oh, yeah. that people i remember that party to this day people looked at me which like which one I was, it was i can't i'm not about to say no names girl wait you talking about the one that was in the basement at that one house yes <laughs> Because it was my <laughs> party, so I was just making sure we was on the same party. It was the one in that basement at that one house. Okay. And <laughs> I remember people were looking at me like I was crazy, like, you brought your really? little sister, okay. blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, because I, I wanted you to have those experiences yeah. with me while I'm around under my protection. Safely. Sa- yes, yeah. so that you can it mix and mingle, feel free, mm. let loose, do whatever. But I would be there at the yeah. end of the day. I didn't want you to go off and do, even once I'm out of high school, if you're in high school, and doing acting crazy. And we're yeah. not raised that way anyways. Right, but like, no. that was the big sister. And I, I respect you so much for that. Like, yeah. for real, I respect <laughs> you so much. Mind you, I was, like, 16 or maybe yeah. younger. Yeah. But that, for me, like, to me, looking back, I would not have changed that for it. Like, mm-hmm. I am so grateful for that because... It, you introduced me to alcohol. Mm-hmm. You know, you were a little older. You had tried it before. Mm-hmm. I hadn't. You showed me how to drink responsibly. That's like, and that was a seed that was sown so young. And mm-hmm. some people would be like, oh my gosh, that's such a horrible <laughs> example or whatever. Like, no, like you literally taught life. me how to drink <laughs> responsibly. Yeah. Like, you have no idea how many situations in life that that's helped me in being the one person who like is in the knows, right mind. knows how to hold her liquor. I know how to sober up. You know, mm-hmm. I know how to not drink, like, you know, when to stop. Mm-hmm. When I went to college, everyone my age, it was their first time trying alcohol or and first that's time. What's the and they went crazy. Because <laughs> that's what they'll do. Everybody went crazy. And then people's grades started plummeting. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I was looking around like, y'all ain't never been to a party before. <laughs> you ain't never had no Jaeger in your life at your big age of 21. <laughs> At, At your, your legal age, age. <laughs> you waited to this big legal age to have a drink. No, but for real, like I just like that was so important yeah. and like long term, and it just set me up to be responsible in college, you know, mm-hmm. and as an adult. So I do appreciate that. High five for safety. High five for underage drinking. Don't say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Jake. laughs> Woo hoo. But yeah, like going back to the high school thing, I was like super shy Mm -hmm. because obviously I had anxiety, but then I didn't know that one because of the age I was, I didn't know what that was, but also like society wise, like Mm -hmm. mental health was not at all. Like this was what, like 2012 or so, 2010, 2012. People weren't thinking about mental health like they are today. People didn't know what anxiety was. I didn't know why I was like that. Why Therapy was a threat. Like, if you had, she goes to therapy. Yeah. Like, Like, so I was, like, really shy and really reserved into myself. And you kind of help with that. But it's funny because now we're, like, opposite, like, you're not, you're not shy. I don't know when it happened. I wouldn't say shy, but you're, you've, like, hermited. Yeah. And I, I for sure have, like, kind of put myself out more because I kind of had to force myself to do that because of my anxiety. I think that's where I'm at with it. Yeah. You know, medication was a taboo. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get any medication to treat my anxiety. I was just kind of, like, forced into things, mm-hmm. you know. And I forced myself into things to try to get rid of that anxiety or pretend it wasn't there. Really, like, a fake it till you make it type thing. It also depends on the environment brought up in yeah as well of for sure how to you like so we don't we didn't have the tools to even no we kind of knew what it was and like you think like am i crazy but then again growing up in the times that we are it's like no multiple people are now are starting to like give it a name or yeah. feel the same way but maybe don't know what it is it's you know that taboo I mean? in a black household <laughs> it's like if it's not something that's like directly in a bible sometimes it's not addressed or it. You know, like everything's kind of given, like, oh, that's that's the devil, or mm-hmm. you know, like exactly, mm-hmm. God'll fix it. Just pray on it. And I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that prayer doesn't work because it does. For so, <laughs> prayer, you know, that's the out. number one medicine. Period. Mm-hmm. But you know, I would have at least liked to have some sort of like 
maybe therapy like to even know (laughs) yeah to even know what was really going on or like why I was feeling this way or why Mm -hmm. I you know literally didn't like talking to people or why my hands would sweat or why I'd be ready to cry you know in social settings like I didn't know what that was about so I wish you know I had some sort of communication about that I wish he did too because I like we've we've only ever grown up with each other and I literally remember the person you were probably from six to middle school even with certain people like would not speak didn't want to really engage yeah. if you did it was minimal our own family members thought I was mute family mem- I yeah. didn't talk to anyone you didn't talk to anybody but then if we would you know it was our family joke like well she don't shut up <laughs> at home at home when I'm comfortable. she don't shut her mouth yeah. so you know what I mean but but then and then for me to see that because people would make comments you know why don't you do that nah, nah, nah. and that's when I would have to stick up and be like she's fine like she, if she doesn't want to talk yeah. to you what is that about why do we feel like we have to force people to speak like it's why are you so also. quiet I think it is you know everything go back to slavery it probably goes back to you know because slaves would have to like this make their true. presence known when they enter a space this is true. you know everything goes back to mm-hmm. that but I just hate how we like bully people who are quiet like let them be they're not hurting mm-hmm. anyone they're probably just sitting there observing. Why are you not observing. talking? Why are you not saying nothing? It's, the real thing is, why are you talking so much? Mm-hmm. Why do you think everybody wants to hear every thought that comes to your word, mind? Word, it's a word. Let's talk about this. And see, I'm <laughs> the opposite person. Where, Like you said, the older that I get, like, recluse is a good word. What I, does that I mean? think recluse. I'm just, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm pulling back. Okay. I also am an observer by nature. For sure. So I'm always looking listening side eye and learning that's just in any environment that's just who i am for sure so i get that aspect of it and like like you said now i'm probably gonna be the person low-key in the function sometimes they're like you good you uh, yeah yeah i'm here i'm cool i'm chilling yeah and somehow that just happened like we're (laughs) we just switched and I became the more like outgoing and it's not even that you're you're not like shy you no, just choose I don't think not I'm a to, shy person. I think that's the different I was a little more shy and I was afraid to talk mm-hmm. you just like choose silence well I, yeah <laughs> I, I do I also yeah. am not I don't speak a lot I'm a listener people you know the word vomit people feel comfortable dumping on me and I thank God that I have the spirit that invites people to do it right no matter of the burden or blessing and a curse bur- yeah blessing I don't and wanna, a curse yeah blessing and a curse because you hear a lot sometimes you hear stuff you don't want to hear sometimes right. you hear stuff you don't necessarily even care about but like if you care about that person right. or like at the end of the day i care about people and I, like to know that you're that one safe space that exactly people have. and I, I i understand that like i said it's a it's a privilege god gave me for to, sure. to have that for sure so. you're also like we joke that you're sugar and i'm spice because you're like the nice <laughs> i don't know yeah. where to describe it essentially you're the nice you're one. not nice not you're not not nice no though. what did i just send you the other day I- what you're, did you send me? You're very much. It's like it, it was something that basically said, "Have you were have you ever met a person who is kind but not nice?" Yeah, and that's exactly and it. That's who that's how that's you exactly are. it. And mm-hmm. you're kind and nice, right? You're yeah. both because kindness is the heart. Mm-hmm. It starts from there, mm-hmm. right? Niceness is the way you portray it to mm-hmm. others. Some people are nice, but mm-hmm. they're not kind. Mm-hmm. It's a fake and it's a front. You're yeah. nice and you're kind. Mm-hmm. I'm not nice. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I have tried. Mm-hmm. I'm too blunt. I'm too honest, and it's, it's sometimes too rude. And I and I I felt I worked on it. I was gonna say bit. I feel like if if you're not that way, then you're gonna be thinking to yourself like beating yourself up about it because you don't think you were honest. That's your thing. Yeah. Like you you're honest. You tell the truth. It's a bluntness. Sometimes it's how you say it. For sure. That needs to be. For sure. But it gets said and it gets the message across. Exactly. And I feel like if you had to fake it and if you tried to be nice and then went away with yourself, you would be irritated with yourself that you were fake nice to 100%. somebody. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's honesty to a fault, mm-hmm. you know, but... Mm-hmm. 
I I don't know how to not be. I've I've worked on it a little bit, I right? Agree. I at least like can reel it in and like internalize mm-hmm. it, but like that's very. I'm but very that's also again, I don't. Yeah, I don't want. Like I said, I know how you would be if you had to be nice to somebody and didn't yeah. want to. You shouldn't have to. Oh yeah, I won't do it. Bury that. No, I know? don't do that. I don't do that. That's when I shut down and when I'm quiet. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm in a situation with somebody I don't want to be nice to, that's one thing Michelle told us. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. I will literally not say anything. I will not say And that's how you know I don't like you. That's how you know I don't like you is if I'm dead silent. We're the team. We're the team. Because, look, silence, and that's the thing. If I don't want to engage with you, again, aside from the... I'm kind of to myself in this, that, and the third. At the end of the day, I'll bring out, I'll talk, this, that, and the third. But if I really, I can ign- I can be in the same space. If there's somebody that I not even butt heads with or whatever has an issue with me, <laughs> and you have to be around that person, you can be cordial. You don't yeah, have to sure. speak your mind. I can do a good cordial. You can, I love a good cordial. Love a good cordial. I Hello, love a good cordial. how are you? Okay, and walking that's it. away. And that's it. Hey, Nothing wrong with that. Bye. That's all it takes. Just a little cordia- cordi- cordiality? I don't know if that's Corg- what Cordiality. Cordiality. I don't know. It's I love it. It sounds right. <laughs> cordiality. It's also funny how the younger sister is usually like the protector. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like we're both our sister's keepers, right? Mm-hmm. I was about to say, because... We are both our sister's keepers. Like, if somebody messes with me, you're going to be right there. But, like, if somebody's messing with us, you default to your kindness. You'll mm-hmm. kill them with kindness. You'll be like, uh, Or no, walk no. away. I'm or a walk diffuser. Away. I'm not even going to engage with you. Like, no, I'll, baby. I'm walking away. Because I need a minute. Because why did you <laughs> think? Why did you think you was ever going to? Ever. And, like, I'm so <laughs> confrontational, too. And you're not confrontational. Not a bit. You'll feel a way not. about something mm-hmm. and you won't say anything mm-hmm. about it. I think that part of it goes back to, again, the people pleaser thing. Mm. I don't, to me, my purpose and like what I'm here for, I don't want to make people feel bad. It hurts because I'm empathetic. It hurts me to make people feel bad. I feel that. Too. So if it's something that's going to hurt somebody's feelings and I know it's going to hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. I'm just, I can't, I'm not, you know? Yeah. But then, again, it's the blessing and the curse thing, because now it's in me, and now I'm still, it's on my mind, or yeah. I'll, I'm fine with it, That's the I'll thing, though. It. I'm a people <laughs> pleaser, and the same thing, I don't want anybody to feel bad or feel some type of way, mm-hmm. but I feel like the best solution for neither of us to have to feel bad or some mm-hmm. type of way is to put it on the table. Yeah. Like, I'm very confrontational, like... If there's weird energy, I'm not just going to let it fly by and just pretend like maybe I will for a little bit, but mm-hmm. it's going to, at some point, it's going to consume me. Yeah. And I have to confront it. Like, I don't leave any stone left unturned in any relationship in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, if there's something going on, if there, you, you know, I know, <laughs> not even want to know about it. We're talking about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm forcing you to talk about it too, you know? Like, I just don't like little stuff lingering. Yeah. You know me. I'm a shut down queen. If shut I don't want to deal with it, Boop, headphones in, I'll be in the room, not going to talk to you. Pretend it didn't happen. Exactly. So, I have learned that, even though it's uncomfortable, and I think that also is another thing with the non-confrontational thing, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Even though it's uncomfortable, 90% of the time, it comes out better on the other 100%. end. It's like that small period of <laughs> discomfort for like to calm the storm for forever and then it's also once it's addressed it's addressed because if you let it linger Leave it, and let it bubble in, under the surface and then the little things just add up no also you don't like i don't need the wrinkles i need my spirit you know, i need gotta stay intact my yeah spirit, like i can't be holding on to stuff. yeah <laughs> one thing we talk about a lot is like our birth order because mm-hmm. like how you ended up being the oldest and i ended up being the youngest and like it was not supposed to be that <laughs> No, I feel like because we were so close in age, mm-hmm. we kind of, like, raised each other or, like, helped each mm-hmm. other. It just depended on, like, certain areas of life. Like, yeah. sometimes I would feel, like, more like the big sister on mm-hmm. certain topics. But then, of course, you, there was always so much for you to teach me that mm-hmm. you had been through and I hadn't experienced yet. I think that's one thing, especially the older that I get, is just like I'm aging, you are aging. And so, because... <laughs> because we are a little so, slower <laughs> <laughs> because we are so close in age i 
realize how old you are. Yeah. And to me, you're that little girl in the high chair with rice stuck in her eyebrows. Yeah. Like, I'm always going to see that. I'm yeah. always going to see you as that. And, like, even when I talk to people and say, like, some, the other day, I told somebody, yes, yeah, some, 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 my, my baby sister, and was like, <laughs> like, she's not a baby. She, I, and then I have to follow up with, she's, she's not a grown a woman. She's 27. That's my she's baby not sister. a baby, but she's my little <laughs> sister, my younger sister. Yeah. And just, Always gonna be that. It, it blows my mind every single day. Like, yeah. Like, every single day. Because you're still six years old to me. I yeah. Don't and it's so interesting how different you can turn out, you know, being mm-hmm. the firstborn mm-hmm. or being the lastborn. Like, just the experiences in life. Like, we've talked about this before. Our parents were two different people Mm -hmm. who they were for you having their first child Mm -hmm. when they just turned 30 and were kind of figuring out life still versus having me even though it was only not even two years later you know they had experience being a parent they knew how to do things you know like had a lot of experience exactly before they had you yeah so you had to be like the guinea pig Mm -hmm. you know i think that because there's even like i said i don't remember a life without you like yeah. you're always you've always it's always been us too right but you know stories how when i was born when i was a baby we lived with granny right and they moved out they didn't even have their own spot and then i don't even know if you remember our apartment that we lived in i remember like the pictures i think the pictures make me Bring, think i remember yeah. i'm not sure if i really remember and it. like i remembered that i remember see you running down the hallways things like Aww. this so after the apartment and we moved into our house and then i feel like that's really when like life started happening for us yeah but you have to think for them they were we've always had older parents our parents are older than a lot of people our right. age mm-hmm. um but they were just adding out they had their first baby they had to live with their parents we're for almost a year. The, we're almost the age now that they were when they had us keep that in mind <laughs> thanks for that little t- tidbit Let me get um, up there. but no but that's what i mean about it they were different people they were at different points of their life it's a different learning thing. When you have a baby, they give you the baby, they tell you to go home and figure it out. Yeah. So by the time you had came around, I also think it had benefited them because they had just done these right. things. Right. By the time It wasn't I like was, a five, seven year exactly. age Exactly. It's like they had did you, this, wore the same clothes, hand-me-downs. Right. They dressed us the same. We yep. were, you know what I mean? So they knew what was coming already. Yes. They were and prepared. Had, had almost still been in the groove and then now we're just doing it with yeah. the next one. And it's like, you're talking a lot about childhood, but that same thing happened over and over again. Mm-hmm. You know, you going off to middle school, mm-hmm. then they're learning, okay, now I have two kids in middle school. Like, you going off to high school, you know, you going to prom for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, like, things like college. You were the guinea pig for everything. Yeah, and I think that's also, like, with the whole, like, younger siblings, the, the leeway thing. It's like, I've done it, they see I, I did all right, so like with you, it's not like they didn't have to try, or they did, but they already had some sort of a blueprint or an idea of what was going to happen, so they felt more comfortable letting you do things, right. or having a later curfew, or right. stuff like that. And I think they, they learn like, what things really didn't matter, mm-hmm. you know, like, okay, it's this is prom night for her like she's gonna be okay mm-hmm. just give her an extra like you say give her an extra hour yeah. like it's fine it won't be the end of the world exactly you know my 18th birthday daddy was like where are you at come home oh my yeah. gosh i'll never forget after my debutante ball we all went to buffalo wild wings right mm. and then we all went downtown to pinball peach when i say as soon as we pulled up downtown to pinball peach he called me like where are you at and looking back as an adult <sighs> I know it was because, you know, debutante, Mm -hmm. prom, those type of events, people think Mm -hmm. you about to... That also was, like, their generation, too. Like, I feel like after proms nowadays, people are, like, gonna go turn up, or they're going to somebody's house, or they're, like, it's not For sure. That was was a thing, like, prom is, like, when you lose your virginity. I was going to pinball peace. (laughs) The only balls I was knocking (laughs) were in the machine. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) Like, you can relax on that. One thing that really humbled me recently when uh-huh. I was having a conversation <laughs> conversation with our mom and 
basically was kind of like complaining about certain things I didn't like in her parenting, you know, mm. now and growing up. And she kind of just like was real and was like, I may not have been like the perfect parent, but mm-hmm. I did the best that I could do. Mm-hmm. And her just saying like, I did the best I could do, like, it really just like a cloud lifted off of me because I was like wow like it's your parents first time living life I think that's one thing we forget as children it's their first time going through life too as you're growing with them as a child they're growing as a parent it's Mm -hmm. their it's your first time walking it's their first time teaching a child how to walk and Mm -hmm. how to potty train and they're gonna make so many mistakes but like just remembering like you did the best that you can do Mm -hmm as many things as I might agree or disagree with you on or what you did or how you did certain things I have nothing but respect for that Mm -hmm. like you honestly saying like that was the best you could do and you truly gave me like the best that you You had in you to do because people can only love you from a capacity of how they know how to love Mm -hmm. or how deeply they were loved Mm -hmm. you know our parents are still healing from traumas they're still trying to fix the gen- the traumas of generations past while you're trying to fix the ones that they gave well, you, you know? And if you think about it, if I'm being real, having a child can exacerbate a lot of that or it can oh, bring up. You won't percent. even know you have a trauma, but you have this child and you feel away and something happens or you react a certain way mm. and you won't even know yeah, that that was that a trigger moment. for you. Yeah. Our parents had whole lives before Before. we were even born like we said our parents were 30 and 34 when they had us like like that's far along in your life that's Uh a lot of life experience to have yeah you know what i mean and you have to you have to recognize that they had learned lessons by then that were they were probably trying to instill but every single day as a parent i think and i'm not a parent is a lesson oh for sure they're still humans and they're going through life granted they're older but they're still going through all these firsts in life right along with us Mm -hmm. and like it just gave me so much more respect for them as parents and just for parents in general like everybody is out here doing their best like the world puts so much pressure on parents and judges parents Mm -hmm. so much you know the different ways people choose to parent but a lot of things that people do are because of how you know they were raised or how certain traumas that they had like on the real adrian would say that her mom wouldn't let her sit on men's lap Mm -hmm. and she Mm -hmm. couldn't even sit on her dad's lap or like couldn't even do certain things around men you know she didn't think it was weird but her mother had an honest conversation with her about why this is traumas and she understood and that's so important i i honestly think that kids can consume that Mm -hmm. at any age as long as you present it to them in the Mm -hmm. right way i think parents should be more open to being real with kids Mm -hmm. and everybody tries to hide from kids and try to be perfect and not show their kids their flaws they can't see me cry no those kids need to see you showing emotion kids they need to understand what emotion you're going through you know because they're they're probably going to face that later in life Mm -hmm. they need to learn that empathy they need to learn what emotions mean you know Mm -hmm. and i think it's true with especially younger kids they're sponges you won't think they're listening they know anything they know everything anyway they see it all it good bad so why not be real start instilling that in them in that age that's why i don't understand why people are so uh, about kids learning about certain things in school to me you're depriving these children these children are gonna go into the world and be lacking they're gonna be behind socially mentally emotionally when you enter society learning and not learning these things you're gonna be like well 100 percent. my kid my kid has to go through racism but yours can't learn about it and that doesn't make any sense and to me you it's have like, to be real we've taught stuff like this amongst other things in school for how many years yeah y'all turned out fine they're fine yeah and now if anything this generation is the generation to embrace that 100%. you're trying you, they, you know the whole indoctrination thing like 
you're trying not to let these kids learn that because you know how progressive these generations are getting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So you're trying to hold them back They're now. They're trying to keep people in the lies. And keep them back now yeah. so that they'll get that mentality and grow up with that mentality. Yep. It's insane. Yep. It's not going to work, though. No. It's not going to work. No. The world is too progressive. Um, there might be a couple of, you know. Just like forever and always. Yeah, there always. Are now. Couple There's bad always going to be the little ones but when you become the the minority and the like the loud minority when you're this big and everybody else is moving with the wave yeah. you're going to be the outlier you're going to be left behind yeah and they're allowing their children to be ignorant yeah which is really sad you can't just go through life pretending things don't exist our parents also and to me the older i get it baffles me because it's not like our parents ever sat us down and said be good people to treat everybody the same you know what i mean no person is different than any person but we grew up being empathetic we grew up caring about people yeah we grew up non-judgmental about fit you know what i mean we grew up in a way that hate wasn't taught in our household no it wasn't taught no in our household but we also were the hated (laughs) yeah yeah this is true i wouldn't really so much expected to have been taught in our household but, but some households are though yeah there are some people that look out uh, you know go out into the world that look like us that look at people oh of opposite, for sure the you know what i mean yeah, yeah. The or even sure. just like you're the bad guy when they're not all the bad for sure. guy and that goes back to the parents like how i said our mother always taught us to be a girl's girl and like we would always root for women mm-hmm. Some people were born with mothers who hated them mm-hmm. or mothers who were jealous mm-hmm. or competed with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you were raised by a mother who's competing with you or jealous of you, you're going to go into the world thinking that all women are like mm-hmm. that. Like, every woman is competition. Every woman is jealous of you or you become jealous of all other mm-hmm. women. You or know? you make yourself feel like you're better than other women or have to feel like you're better than other you women. You have to feel like you're better than mm-hmm. others. So it definitely starts with the parents, Most for sure. Definitely. This was fun, sister. <laughs> so much fun. Thanks for coming. Oh, no, my God. God. Oh, baby. Did we, the whole physical touch. You might be the That's best. That's me. I'm physical touch, sister. But physical touch, Barbie. I'm quality time. This was a quality good, time, This Barbie. was a good quality time. Now I'm a sweating because you're yeah. a baby. Because we are sisters. Sisters. We stand together.